Okay. So there we go. All right. So uh, we have been talking about binary trees before the test, and now we are past the test now, and we're going to come back to talking about binary trees. Um, the last thing we talked about was the uh, what we said it was called the uh, lowest common ancestor, and now we're going to talk about traversals. And so forget about binary search trees and just focus on binary trees in general. So that means they don't have to be in the in that sort of order where the uh, the left child is less than the than the parent and the right child is greater than the parent, less than or equal to, I suppose. Uh, now we're just going to focus on a tree in general, like a hierarchy. So let me go ahead and draw a tree. And actually, because to avoid thinking of binary search per se, let's go ahead and Mm, maybe we do that, and then maybe, I don't want to go too far, so, okay, that. Let's go ahead and give these letter names. Okay, so, if I, if I went ahead and, like, blocked my screen, you know, and I, you know, and I said, I want to build this tree that I have. And I'm just going to give you the letters. Can you build it? Not really. Because there's a lot of ways that you, especially because this is not a binary search tree, there's, I suppose, n factorial ways of doing it. I don't know. I don't know what the math would be behind that. Uh, maybe not n factorial, but n times the number of nodes, one squared ways. No, I don't, I don't know. There'll be a lot of different combinations that you could do. Like, for example, a could be the root. B could be the root, C could be the root. So there could be N different roots. However, for each root, you can have a bunch of combinations within. So it might actually be factorial, I'm not sure. But uh, the point is that what we wanna go and, and, and do, especially because we're gonna be implementing a tree in assignment six, is to figure out a way to easily represent a tree using a list. So if I give you a list of, of, these, of these values, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, all the way to, to, uh, to L, from that, can you build a tree, basically? And that's what we want to get to. So it turns out that you cannot build a tree from a list, no matter what order I give you. It's quite tricky, um, unless the list that I give you is of a not full, but complete binary tree. Remember full, complete, and, and uh, perfect? Full, basically, zero or two children for each node. Complete is where every level is full except the last level, and that last level, if it's not full, all the nodes are to the left-hand side. If you have a tree of that format that is full, then yes, you just need one traversal and you can build it. So actually, let's go ahead and start with that one. So how to make this full? Well, let's just take a part of this. Let's just take this part, which is because it's almost full, and we'll use that as an example. And let's just add another one here. So now it's full, okay? And it's also technically a perfect tree as well. And it's balanced, so, yeah. Um, in fact, it's full, complete, everything, right? Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, because we did, did we do a Venn diagram in this class at all when I was showing those things? Uh, we, I actually, here, yeah, I'll show you that real fast. Um, here's a Venn diagram of the different types of, binary trees, categories. So we have full, complete, perfect, and then balanced. Balance is green. As you can see, there are trees that are full, but they're not necessarily means that they're complete. There are some that, that are full and complete, and all perfect trees are also full and complete. And then their balanced trees can be full, but not perfect or complete, or they can also be full and complete at the same time, or all three of them together. So it's just basically how they uh, get shared in between. Okay, so there are four main traversals that we're going to talk about. And the first one that I'm going to talk about is the level order traversal, which is also known as breadth first search. Although we, when we talk about graphing, then we'll really kind of explore how to do that algorithm. So right now we're just most, you know, mostly worried about that kind of naming convention. And what that means is, each traversal means that we're going to print out all the nodes into a list. So, you know, like A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever. But uh, the order that we print them 
that's going to depend on what type of traversal we're doing. So with the level order traversal, what I'm going to be doing is printing out the nodes from left to right by level, starting with the root. So in that case, the always the first uh, node that you print out in the level order traversal is going to be the root. So that would be A. And here, we can highlight it like that. So that's the first level, right? The next level from there would be B and C. And then the next level from there, there are those, right? So it turns out that in level order traversal, we are going to just print out by level. So that's level, you know, the first level. And then we have the second level, which is B and C. So we print from left to right. And then we print out the third level. So we have D, E, X, and F. And there you go. That's your level order traversal. Now, here's the thing. Suppose that I didn't have the X. What would be the level order traversal of this? It'd be the same thing, but basically you wouldn't have that. It would just go from E to F, right? So herein lies the issue of trying to rebuild the tree from this traversal. So if I am given this tree and, I, and somebody tells me like, this is the traversal of a tree, then I can say, oh, okay, really? Well, then maybe this is your tree. And I don't have to do all that always like this. Because that's levels, right? Here's a level, 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 and then level, level, right? So is that tree the same thing as this tree? It's not. They're different, right? But they have the same level order traversal. So the only time when you can really draw the same tree out of a level order traversal is if you know that it's a complete tree. Because if you know that it's a complete tree, that means that B has to go right here. Otherwise, you would leave that empty, and it would no longer be a complete tree. So if that happens, then here, let's just let's make this tiny a little bit to the side. If we have to make it complete, then it becomes A, B, C, D, E. And if it was X, F, then that's great. You get the same thing. But here's the problem. If there had no, if there was no X, if this was only you know A B C D E and then F, there's no X, then X could go on uh, or F could go on either one, right? It could go here or it could go here. That's why I'm saying and it has to be a complete tree because that's saying that all keys go to the left. That way this works. So um, as long as you know that the traverses that you're building is of a complete tree, then you're good. Now, can you kind of uh, work around that to build any binary tree with a level order traversal as long as it's if it's not a complete tree and the answer is yes you can just designate a specific character in your input file that represents sort of an empty empty uh empty node and for example we can say x represents that so from there if i have more nodes here actually let's look at the, at the original one here if i have this guy and I'm trying to just build it with a level order traversal, all I can do is just basically fill all the empty uh, childs with X's. So that, and that one doesn't you don't need to because it's complete at this point. Oh no, but I, I do have over here um, X, 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 and then X, 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 X. Uh, we're running out of space because now we need that one right here, right? So that one will have two children, and each of these will have, is there like a plane outside? Yeah. That, okay. So now it would be basically a complete tree. How many nodes does this tree have? Remember the, uh, the algorithm for that? If it's, if it's a, uh, well, if it's a full tree, or sorry, a perfect tree, it would be two to the H minus one. So what's the height here? Well, one, two, three, four, or we can cons if if we consider it this as, as a zero, then it would be a one, two, three, four, five. So two to the five is thirty-two, I think, right? Minus one. So is there thirty-one nodes here? No. I, th I I don't know. I mean, there's, there's like there's a lot right here. What's that? Oh, because it, this formula makes you want to count it as, as five. Otherwise. 
you're off by one. So. Well, yeah. Not over here, right? well, yeah. We so I guess it's a, it should be th it should be twenty nine, right? Let's see if that's the case. Uh, one, three, plus four, seven, and then the next one's gonna happen. <laughs> and then from there, that has eight levels, then sixteen, and then thirty two. So that's way more. Actually, or or unless we did we did we uh oh no no I went I went one level too far here, right? Here, let's use the, the same syntax for everything. So it's one, two, four, eight, sixteen, right? There's one there, there's two there, there's four there, there's eight here, and then there's sixteen here. Well, not sixteen on the last one, but fourteen. So then add those together. So here is six plus fourteen is twenty. 28. We're off by one. Oh. Yes, 15 plus 14. <coughs> What's that? 15 plus 14 is not 28, though. Oh, did I just mess up the math? Yes. It's 29, right? Yes. Okay, so we're good then. <laughs> so there you go. If I ask you in a test, you know, you don't have to count them manually. You can just use that formula, right? As long as you remember that the height is kind of weird for that one. But anyways, so ultimately... If I, if I give you a complete tree and I just mark everything that's supposed to be empty with X, when you're actually building it, all you have to do is set it to null instead of inserting a node right there. And that's exactly what you're going to have to do for assignment six. For assignment six, you're going to get the level order traversal of the tree. So you're going to get something like this. With an, instead, instead of an X, I use a percent sign, I believe. And so that's your, uh, your flag for an empty node. And so you're going to build a tree out of that, and then you're going to do the other traverses we're going to talk about today. Assignment seven, you're going to do what I'm going to show you next class, maybe at the end of this class, you have time, which is to build a traversal from not just a level order, but from other, traver other uh, traverses we'll talk about, and you don't need to have this nasty flag stuff. So that's assignment seven. So assignment seven is, and six are almost, I, they could have been the same assignment. I just split them for uh, easier grading and whatnot. So, uh, okay. Any, any, any questions so far about level order traversals? They're relatively straightforward. The only uh, risk that you run into when trying to print out the level order traversal, like say you're on a test and you're trying to do it fast, is if you're sloppy, just like I am here. Because here's the thing, I'm like trying to, if I'm trying to print out the level order traversal, it's this, 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 and then technically these two guys, and then these two, right? And then the next level is this, 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 and that's it, right? See this nasty, weird curve that I have there? <laughs> it's very easy that if you're just doing the traversals, you're like, oh, it must be this, 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 this and this. Are you gonna draw like that and you just lost these guys, right? Oh, of course not. No, 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 no. I, I would give it to you looking nice, but I'm saying, <laughs> Sometimes you're gonna to have to build a tree in a test and then do the traversals on the, on the tree that you just built. You just and if you're building it super fast and it's wonky like that, you gotta be careful that you don't uh, draw the traversal bad because it's not nicely drawn. So. Can't you just add, like, do two to the eight plus one minus one so that we preserve the definition of one? I mean, that was, I, I, that's on the notes. Uh, yeah, two to the eight plus one minus one. That's right. Yep. Because I never remember the other formula. This one I don't remember. This is, look, there's like less numbers and characters there, okay? <laughs> That's less space in your brain required to store that information, okay? There's two characters more. Exactly. That's two characters more. There's a lot of information that, ha and also there's a higher chance of mixing them up, right? There's only one operation here that's like using a symbol, which is a minus. Here there's like a plus and a minus. <laughs> you might do this in, as an accident. <laughs> you, uh, you just wait, I'm gonna ask you then to, to, to give, this me, give me that on the test and if you get it wrong, I'll deduct points in addition to not getting points. <laughs> but yes. If I get it right, then I gain more points, okay, deal. Well, isn't that how the uh, bonus question works, test, test, right? You get like, it was like a everything or nothing kind of thing. Why do you have the work of generations? Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> Why not? But anyways, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, you can use this, and then you can actually count the way we would count. So this is one, two, three, and four. Okay, if you remember that one. But anyways, moving on. So 
This is the part of the, the uh, class where I said like the easiest thing to explain this in the test is actually with code, and that's how to tra how to understand the, fo the following two traversals. So in addition to level order, we have pre-order, post-order, and level order. And those are the three traverses that we're going to talk about. And the way they work is as follows. In fact, let me write what I always write to remember them. Yeah, okay. Now I can talk to them, now I remember them. So as long as you remember that, you're good if you understand the syntax. So what this is saying is that when you have a node like this, in a pre-order traversal, you're going to, as the name indicates, you're going to traverse the tree and you're going to print the nodes of the tree that you're traversing in a specific order. The R here stands for um, print, actually. I suppose you can think of it that way. Or, bis or, 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 or output. What was the last one in order? Oh, did I write them? Oh, yeah, I wrote level order, my bad. I don't know what I was thinking. Yes, thank you. In order. Yes, because we already talked about level order, so why would I be putting that? So, yeah, thank you, thank you. So this is saying, as you're visiting, whenever you see this big R symbol, you print it out. This means go to the left child, and this means go to the right child. So if we're doing the pre-order traversal of the following tree, A, B, and C. If we're doing pre-order, it says to print the notes as you visit them for the first time. So you're going to print A. So you've done this. Now you move on to the left. So you go to the left child, you go here, and you start over again from the beginning because it's recursive, right? Which has print out the node. So you print out the node. And then from there, it says to go to the left. There's no left child, so nothing happens. Try the right child. There's no right child, so nothing happens. So then you go back here. Where did you come from here? Well, if we were kind of writing the logic of this, that was when we were at A node, and then we went to the B node, and we did R, L, L, and then we came back. But before we left, we were here, right? We came back to the left. So now we go ahead and we do the right. So that means go to C. So then we're per se here. And so now we're going to do the C. So C has the same thing, R, L, R. So C says to print out the, the, uh, the node first. So C, go to the left. There's no left. Go to the right. There's no right. This finishes. You go back to over here, which means go back here. Since you were at the right, now it's done there. You go back up, but that's the root node, so you're done. So this is your pre-order traversal. Let's do a bigger example. And I'll, 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 I might have done that a little bit faster than I think about it, so maybe I'll slow down. So we're doing pre-order traversal. In fact, before I write on this, let me copy it down here to do the same traversal, but post-order or whatever. Okay. So remember, you want to, uh, I suppose, print... Go left and go right, which I personally, I don't know why, but I remember it writing a big R and a little L and an R. But you don't have to do that. I don't know. Maybe Derek shot me that and it just got in my brain. I don't know. Okay? Because, I mean, I think P makes more sense or something, but who knows? It's just, it's just stuck in there forever. So I'm making it stuck on you now, I guess. So, uh, anyways. So, again, pre-order traversal. What we do is we start out, and you can think of this as a function. In fact, before I even show you the big example, would you like me to show the example, or would you like me to write the recursive code first? Example? OK, so we'll do the example, and then we'll actually write the code for this. So OK, so we start out with the root. That's what we, in the, we, we begin with. So I'm going to kind of keep track of where I'm at here by saying we're at A. And at A, we have to do these three things. So we start out, oh, I wrote them backwards. We start out like that. At the R, which again is the print. So uh, I'll keep my uh, traversal right up here. 
So that means A. Okay? And then we are supposed to go to the left. So there is a left, so we go ahead and do that. So we're at B. B also needs to have the same thing. Yeah, let me make it bigger so you don't get confused. Okay. RLR. So first thing is just to print it. So we print it, B. And then we are supposed to go to the left. So there is a left, so we were at D now, which has the same thing. Okay. So D, first thing we got to do is print it. So here we go. Left. There is no left, so we don't go anywhere. There is no right, so we don't go anywhere. So we're done. So we kind of go back up. You can think of this as a little stack. So you go back up to the B. And where did we stop at the B? Right here, right? Because we have these underlined. So now we've gone back up there to the B. So the next step is to go to the right of the B. So we go there. We can kind of erase this from the memory now. But I think for now, actually, I'll just cross it out. So it's left on the notes. And so now we're at E. Tell me if I'm going fast here. Um, so we're at E now. First thing we do is we print it. Then we go to the left of that. There is a oh, there is a left, right? So then we just stop that right there. Remember that we're here. And then we go to the G. First thing we do is we print it, G. And then we go to the left of that. There is a left. So you go ahead and write the J. Okay, we are at the J. The first thing we do is we print it. So we go ahead and we print it. And then we got to go to the left and to the right of that. There is no left. There is no right. So you basically finish there. So you cross that out and you go back to the previous thing, which was G, which is basically you going back up. Okay, we're at G. We just came from the left. So the next thing we do is we go to the right. Is there a right to G? Is there? Yes, there is. So then we go there. So that's K. Okay, so the first thing we do is we print the K. And we're running out of space. We'll, uh, where's that? Now we have space. Okay, so uh, K. We print the K out, then we gotta go to the left of the K. There's nothing to the left, and there's nothing to the right of the K. So then we basically just terminate the K, and we go back up to whatever called the K, which was the G, right? So we go back up to the G. At the G, we just came from the right, and there's nothing else, so we're actually done with the G now. So we go back up to the E. At the E, we just came from the left, so now we gotta go to the right. But there is nothing to the right of the G. So in that case, nothing happens. And then we terminate E, which means we go back to B. We're at B, we just did the right of B, so yet again, there's nothing left, so we terminate that, so we go back to A. Back to the root. From A, we just came from the left side. The next thing is to go to the right side. So is there a right? Yes, there is. We go to the C. I'll start writing them here so you can see it closer to the code. So for this, so and, and the, you know, we just came from that, and we're currently going there. So for the C, we're going to do the same thing. We got to print it out first. So we print out C. And then we got to go to the left of that. There's nothing to the left, so nothing happens. Then we go to the right. There is a right, so we, go, we do go there. That's the F. So we are now at the F. First thing we do is we print it. And then we got to go to the left of that. There's an H. Print the H. Go to the left of that, W, is that a W? I guess it is, it is now. I think it was an L actually. Yeah, it was an L, so let's stick with the L. L, go to the left of that, there's nothing. Go to the right of that, there's nothing. You're done with this, you go back here, you just came from the left, you gotta go to the right now. Oh, not there, my bad, erase that. We're actually at the H, so we just came back this way. There's nothing to the right of H, so nothing happens, so then you go back to the F. Now you go to the right of F. 
and you find the I. Print it out, go to the left of I, nothing, go to the right of I, nothing, come back. Goes back to the F, the F is done, you come back to the C, the C is done, you come back to the A, the A is done. When you're done with that root node, you're done with the algorithm, you just did the uh, pre-order traversal. So that was kind of boring because it's the same thing over and over, but I think you got it. So now let me go ahead and write the recursive code for that. Okay, so the only parameter that I seem to recall to you is a cur parameter, a node being our binary tree node, which has a left and a right child, right? So node, we assume node to have the following, data left, right, okay? If that is the case, then if we are doing pre-order traversal, remember, we want to print it out, then go to the left, and then go to the right. So uh, first thing I want to put in here, because I don't know where, who called this or what happened, is if cur is equal to null, then get out of there. Because uh, that's like, you know, you got called on something that is null. So, which means you probably got called on a child, right? So that's our base case, per se. If that's not the case, then cur is not null. So no null pointer exceptions, hopefully. And so now, we can go ahead and print it out. So how do we print it out? We can just see out it. Or we can return it if you're returning it to somebody else. But, you know, usually you're just printing it, whatever. What? I don't want to put those there. And maybe you want to put a comma after and a space since we're printing it out in that fashion over here that we had. You know? Yeah. And because, I don't know, I mean, this is sequential code. It should be okay, but I don't trust it. Put a flush in there just to make sure it prints out in order. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. <coughs> you got to flush down the toilet. <laughs> so, okay. From there, we need to go left and right. All that is is a recursive call. Oh, I suppose I should add it. If data is a pointer, as it is in your assignment, then you just gotta dereference it. So in that case, it would be, uh, instead of doing cur data like that, it would be with that. And remember, this has higher precedence, so you don't have to worry about parentheses. That'll work just fine if data is a dynamically allocated variable using new. So, but yeah, anyways, um, moving on, to do the left and the right, all you gotta do is call the function again. Pre-order. Left side first, pre-order, right side second. That's it. Now, if you want to avoid a useless recursive call, you can wrap those pre-order and, and uh, left and right calls in an if statement saying if, pre if cur left is equal to null, if not equal to null, then do the call. That avoids, a, otherwise, it's okay because this guy will take care of it up here. But you still have a useless recursive call, which takes time. So if you're doing that 10,000 chips or something, <laughs> then I don't know. Maybe that helps. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But although this one is a James Bond assignment, so there won't be on chips. So. What's the flush after that comma? Great question. That, the flush, so here's the thing. If I say hello world and I put at the end end line, what does end line do? It's a line feed, right? But it's not just a line feed, actually. It's, it's a line feed on a flush. So back to the question, what is flush? Well, it turns out that when you're writing output to the I.O., uh, to the standard terminal or whatever, and you're sending output to, to the computer, all you're doing as a program is saying to, to, the, to the OS, like, yo, print this out. And that's it. That's all you tell it. You don't tell it in, in when, who, what, where. And it, it's going to get to you, but it's going to be like, yeah, I'll get to you sometime, but I got this stuff to do first. It's possible that if you're running a lot of code and you're sending a lot of print statements to the, to the I.O., uh, it's possible that like things may get out of order and printed out of order. Or if you have a program that is, has a sec fault in it, it's possible that it may not get to print in that before you crash. 
And then it's like, oh, he told me that he wanted me to print this, but he's dead. So I don't have to do it anymore. So I don't do it. So it's possible. So, so I've seen a lot of cases, and people are like, thinking it's black magic, where like, they put a see out statement when they're debugging, right? And they don't put an end line. They just say, see out, I got to this line. And then they run the program, and sometimes they get to the line, and sometimes they don't. Like, you get this, I got to this line printed out. And they're like, what is happening? And it's because sometimes it actually got to printing it before it crashed. Other times, it crashed before it got to that printing. Whereas, when you put the flush, it's like your program has an attitude. And it's like, I'm going to stand here and wait. I'm not going to keep running the code until you confirm to me that you printed it out. So you actually halt your code at the end line, and you wait until you get confirmation from the OS that you printed out that to the terminal. And then it's like, you're done? OK, now I'll continue. Whereas in the other one, it's like, yeah, take care of this, and then you keep going. So it's, it's sort of that, uh, what do they call it? Um, halting, halting output or something, per se. So that's what flush is, basically. So now you know, if you're, if you're doing, which you shouldn't, go to, go to the 10 a.m. class and learn how to properly debug. Now you know if you're debugging, put an end line or a flush after your, your C out statement. Otherwise, you don't guarantee they'll print out before it crashes, which is even the worst thing. Because then you might think like, oh, it's not getting to this line. But it might be, but like, you don't see it. It's better to use flush or end line. Is it better? Which one is better, flush or end line? They both do the same thing with the addition that end line in addition to flushing gives you that line feed at the end. So if you don't want a line feed there, for example, here I don't want a line feed. I just want to print out and make sure this prints out first. So flush is my case, because I don't want to have an enter there, a useless enter, basically. If I, if I wanted to have an enter, and I wanted to be lazy, I can just use endline instead of putting slash n and then flush, so. Uh, I was going to say, why not use uh, forward slash n instead of flush or end out? Because forward slash n is just a line feed, but there's no, fl there's no uh, flushing, basically. Uh, okay. So yet again, it might or may not print in order. What is, uh, is it similar to what C error does to C out? C error? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't know C error, so I couldn't tell you. Anybody know C error? But that's just only if there's an error. I believe so. Like it seems to do the same thing. Well, well, no. This is this is like this doesn't have to this doesn't have to be involved with errors. It's just simply a. It waits for the printing to happen before the program continues, because it's possible. Like try try doing this. Write like a, a loop that just runs a billion times. And then put some complicated code inside, like function call, not function call, but like something complicated with math involved. And it's possible that it's not printing out of order. And then you're like, whoa, well, that's weird. Why is it printing out of order? And it's because of the flush. It's kind of hard to make it happen, but I, I've seen it done. So uh, yeah, that's flush. But anyways, back, back to 302 from 202 band. Because <coughs> um, I did show you flush, right, in 202. No, you, you only know. talked about end line briefly. That was like one of the first things he asked. We're like, hey, what is the difference between end line and line and the is it, backslash, backslash end? No, okay. Did you use flush in the, the battle royale thing? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a perfect example because otherwise things will get printed out weird. Sometimes they would get printed out weird with, without flush because there was so much happening in that game, and like <coughs> it was refreshing everything that sometimes weird things would happen. So yeah, yeah, that's a good example of flush actually. But then we move to the Ellen Curses library, which is better than, than C out anyway. Doesn't that still have some sort of flush, or like refresh? It had, a, it had a refresh, but I don't think it was needed because it was, it, we, we use it to refresh the screen, but I, even if we hadn't, I don't think it would have printed out of order because Ellen Curses is better at handling that. But definitely when we're using C outs, then yeah, we have to use flush. Yeah, that was fun. I still think we should do it as a final project. So. Okay, but anyways, that's the recursive code basically. Um, two calls and a C out, and wrap that with a null, and you're good to go. Guess what? I'll just go ahead and do it now. Your post order and in order is going to be the exact same thing, it's just a different order. <laughs> Such a shock, right? Your mind is blown, I guess. Yeah, that's right. At least the, the pencil is working fine today. 
There you go. Bam. Done. Can you do that in the test? <laughs> you know, you could in the test. You can use the fines like that people were doing on Discord, right? You could define that entire line as a define called like A and B. And then you just, yeah. Uh, I think that'll work fine. So you could do something like this. Put that and then do like. like that it's like a little mini macro and then you can just literally write the word a here and you're good so you can actually do that on the test because i will 100 percent ask you to to give me these traverses on the test and that and that would save time yeah yeah yeah. in fact yeah just go go on discord they were using like neep or something like that uh, don't forget to rename post order where the function call the function call. you have pre-order still Oh, yeah, I actually did that when I was doing assignment six and I was confused. And then I was like, oh, I forgot to rename them. <laughs> yeah, because I, I copied and pasted. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. So then that actually, you can't, you can't do the defines then. <laughs> Unless you do, um, yeah, no, you can't do that. In, wow. You can do that in Python because in Python you can re rename functions. On, you, can, you can write self-writing code. It's very dangerous. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Order one or something. Just change the numbers slightly. Oh, no, that, that's not There you go. So, oh well. At least I don't have to take the test. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna do the in order one. No space, please, I guess. I, it looks like I have a space, but I don't. That's an optical illusion. <coughs> okay. For the in order, you guys tell me what you think it's going to be. The see out statement goes in between. In between which the ones? Orders. That's right. Like such. And we're good. So there you go. In order, pre-order, and post-order. You haven't even seen in order and post-order me doing an example, but you know based on the, on the, on the uh, mini algo summary thing that I wrote here, like left R right, and then this one is left right R, and then this one is R, L, R left right, that you're just flipping those, those, that C out on the function call. So, okay, so let's go ahead and do, um, let's do the same traversal, but with a, well, you guys tell me, what would you like to see next? Pre-order or in order? In order? Okay, so let's do in order. So that one is, in the middle, it's in, right? Um, think about like make the connection in the brain. Uh, this is such a long. Well, this time we'll do it a little bit quicker, I guess. We'll start slow and then we'll speed it up. Always start at the root. However, in this case, even though you're starting at the root, if you look at the order of operations here, the first thing you got to do is that recursive call. So you don't print the root out yet. You go to the left of it first. So you get to the B. Same thing, the B, you don't print out the B. You go to the left of B first. You get to the D. Same thing, you don't print out the D first. You technically go to the left of D, but that's empty. Then you technically, because you know it's empty, you go back to D, and then you see the R. So the first thing you're actually going to get printed out here is going to be the D. From there, you try going to the right of D. Again, it's empty, so then you're done. So then you go back to the B. Okay, so you just finish from the, from the left, so the next thing is to go to the, to the root, or sorry, to, to print it out, which is that R, so then you're going to print out the B. And then you go to the right of it. So you're going to go, oh, you don't cross it out yet, my bad. You go to E. So go to the left of that, go to G. 
and go to the left of that again. Uh, go to the J. Then the J has no left, so you print it out. Has no right, so you go back to the G, print out the G. And then go to the right of that, you get to the K. The K has no left, you print out the K. The K has no right, then you go back to G. You're done with G at this point, so you go back to E. E, you print it out. And then you go to the right of it, but it has no right, so you're done with that. You go back to B, from the B, you just came back from the right. So you're done with it, so you go back to A. Now you print out A. And then you go to the right of that. Do you want me to, to keep showing you the, the little things here, or can I just go straight to printing them? Okay, so in that case, you go to the C, you go to the left of C, nothing happens, you print the C out. You go to the right of C, go to the F. When you get to the F, you don't print out the F yet. First you go to the H, then you go to the, w, the L. Now you can print out the L, nothing there. You go back to the H, print out the H, nothing there, go back, F. And then you go I, and you print out the I. So we, uh, we ran out of space, unfortunately, for the I. Not to fear, though. Can you do it on the whiteboard? You can. So there you go. I think we got all of them in there. So uh, it's relatively straightforward once you know, or at least when you know this. That's the, that's the key, right? Remember that. Don't get them mixed up. Of course, in a test, you don't have to do this nasty stuff. You can just do the, do the arrows and print it out. You know, it's all good. I mean, I would show the errors. Uh, I mean, you don't have to, I suppose, but if you get it wrong, then there's no partial credit in that case, right? Because if you show some work, at least I know what's happening. But I mean, you could just be like, oh, let me just, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me just draw arrows on each one. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you, uh, maybe what I've seen done before, and it's a it's a brilliant idea. It's one thousand IQ idea. Yeah. <laughs> Big brain idea is to do the following. So I'm gonna l I'll put this twice. I'm gonna leave it like that, and then I'm gonna put it down here for what we do post order. Is they do the following? They just draw the, the way, so they go like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go from here. That works. Yeah. That's gross. That's gross. <laughs> so, um, I want you to notice something about the in order traversal. This list is not, is not a binary search tree, right? But let's go ahead and do one that is real fast. So if, if this is five, then this could be like three, one, two, eight, seven, okay? Let's make the one bigger because it looks kind of small. Okay. Let's do the uh, let's do the pre-order traversal. No, pre-order pre -order first. We already did pre-order, right? Yeah. So pre-order is going to be five, three, one, and then two, eight, seven. That's pre. The in-order traversal is going to be one, two. Three, nothing there, go back. Five, left first. Seven, go back. Eight, you're done. Yeah, in order is in order. Would you look at that? A CS algorithm that actually has a meaningful name. Quick sort is, is it quick? Well, I guess quick sort is quick, but that doesn't really tell you much about the algorithm. Merge sort is nice though, it merges things. But yeah. <laughs> So yeah, in order traversal of a binary search tree gives you back the sorted traversal. That's uh, assignment eight, assignment seven for you. Is uh, you you sort the ten thousand chips 
by printing the unordered traversal of the APL tree, which is a variation of the binary tree that's balanced. And then you can time that and compare it to your, to your other algorithms. But yes, um, I suppose that that's another quote unquote sorting algorithm in a way. You just throw everything into a binary tree and then, and then um, print out the traversal of that. Let's, let's think about the, the, the uh, let's analyze the uh, complexity of that. If the tree is balanced, that means that the height is log n, right? Which means that inserting a number into a log n tree is going to take log n time, right? And then performing the traversal is going to take n time, right? However, when we're inserting it, where how many times are we going to be inserting things into our log n tree? n times. So that's where the log n times n log n comes in. Because we have n numbers to insert into our tree, <coughs> and each of those takes <coughs> log n time as long as it's a balanced tree, right? n log n. Suppose that it's a degenerate tree, or as the nickname we gave it on this course was anime tree, then in that, or, or pathological tree. In that case, then um, instead of log n time, the general entry is like a linked list, it's going to be n time, right? So n time to insert n numbers is n squared. So if you have a degenerate tree and you're performing this sort of sorting algorithm where you're just throwing everything to a binary tree and then doing the inner traversal, it will take n squared. But if you throw everything into a binary tree and you get lucky and you get that log n height, then it's going to be n log n, which is as good as merge score. How would you get lucky? Well. We make our own luck using an ABL tree. We can guarantee that log n height, which is what we'll talk about when we talk about ABL trees. But a little teaser into that. Because after all, we got to analyze those time complexities, right? What about space? Well, this is just, you just sort of the list, right? So that's n, but auxiliary space is just uh, not even not even no of one because we don't need a swap variable here. So no auxiliary space. Not really. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that I just wanted I just wanted to kind of introduce you that into the in the order because that's kind of what's ahead. That's one usage of this traversal stuff. Okay, last one. Post order. The last order. Um, left, right. I think in my brain I remember that as root. That's, that's, I think that's where the R comes from, if I remember correctly. Left, right, root. I just call it that in my head. So, um, okay. I guess I'll, for the first two or three, I'll do the little letter stuff. So you start out at A, and the first thing you gotta do is go to the left of A before you print it, because printing is the third thing. So you get to B. When you get to B, you gotta do the same thing. Go left of that get to D. You got to do the same thing, but there's nothing, so you come back. Same thing on the right, but there's nothing, you come back. Finally, you print it out on your way out, per se. So the first thing you the, on this traversal is going to be actually D. You go back to the B, and then you got to go to the right of B, which gets you to the E. And I'm, ju I'm just going to keep going from here now using these. Once you get to the E, you got to go to the G. And then you got to go to the J. And then you can't go deeper than the J, so you print that out. You go back to the G, but you don't print out the GJ. You actually go to the right, in this case, to the K. Then you print out the K. Now, as you're going back, you print out the G. Print out the E because you can't go there anywhere. Then you print out the B, and then you get back to the A, but you don't print it out yet because you go to the right of that first. Same with the C. You go here, but there's nothing. You go here before printing C out. Get to the F, go here, go here. Can I go there? Can I go there? In that case, I'll print out the L. Come back here, cannot go this way, so then I'll print out the H. Go here, I can't go this way, so I don't print out the F yet. I get to the I on the way back, I print out F, 
si A. Want you to notice something. On your pre-order traversal, the first, and this is sort of a uh, verification that you did the right thing. In your pre-order traversal, the first thing that you print out is always going to be the root. In your post-order traversal, the last thing that you're going to print out is going to be always your root. In the in-order traversal, it, it, it's going to be uh, pretty much, it'll be the first thing if your tree as a root only has a right-hand side to it or nothing. Uh, but if it has a left-hand side, then the entire left-hand side will have to be printed before the root gets printed. So it'll be somewhere in the middle. Or if, if the tree is just completely in this direction, then everything will be printed and then the last thing will be the root. But usually the root is in the middle as long as there is two sides to the, uh, to the root. Two children, left and right. So how do we feel about traversals? Not too bad to code them, right? The tricky part is not this part. It's the tree itself that's, that's, uh, that's getting everything right. And even then, it's not too bad. The one that I haven't covered the pseudocode for is level order traversal, right? Breadth first. That's because when we talk about breadth first, and I'll really get into how you actually do that code. So for the assignment, I believe I gave, I, I, uh, in the skeleton code, I give you the breadth first search traversal. Um, so you, you, you have that. That's a starting point. The way that works, it's actually, it's actually really hard. Um, here's the thing. When you're creating a binary tree in a computer, you can make it into, you, can make, you should make it into like a linked list style with pointers, but you can also, and we'll talk about this when we talk about heaps, you can also keep this in an array. And what you would keep in the array is the level order traversal. And here's the cool thing about that. If I tell you the, Where's, the, where's our level order traversal? This one. Well, we'll make it another one. So there's our level order traversal of this. And we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Here's the thing. If this is kept in an array, this breaks. The only way that you can keep this cleanly is if you maintain all of the rest of the trees marked as empty in a complete tree sort of system. So that one you don't really need because that's okay. So now I gotta modify this and create it that way. So this becomes zero, one, two, so I'll just write it here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and this would have been 14 here, okay? Here's the cool thing. If you have the level over traversal and you're trying to insert this into like a binary tree, you can find out what the child of any node is by taking that value, multiplying it times 2, and then adding one if it's the, le if the right child or just using that if it's the left child. Uh, the only trick to that is that you have to, um, you have to finesse it if you, if, if, if you start out counting from one. So for example, look at the index of C. The index of C is two, right? Notice the index of the children of C. Well, there's no child here, so we have an X, but it's technically on five, and the other one is on six. Notice that the relation here is that um, if you take two, multiply times two, and add one to that, you get five, right? If you take two, multiply times two, and add two to it, you get six. Now look at six here. Six. 13 and 14 has the same thing. Take 6, multiply it times 2, add 1, you get 13. 6 multiplied times 2, add 2, get 14. So to get the child of any node, the index of the child, all you got to do is multiply times 2 and add something to it. I personally don't like this. This is the one case 
where I actually like our race to start at one. Because if you start them out at one, so if you start this as a one here, then it becomes easier. If you want to get the right child, all you got to do is take the index, multiply times two. And then for the left child, index times two plus one. I don't like having that extra plus one there, plus one and plus two. Yeah, the other way around. What's it? Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys got it. Oh, I'm glad. But for the people watching the video, yes. Okay. So uh, whichever way you decide to index, you know, if you're doing MATLAB, this is the way. If you're doing it like this, although technically in my skeleton code, I, uh, I don't know if I gave you that as part of the skeleton code. But if I did, you will notice that I'm counting my arrays from one, which you might be like confused of. I'm warning you about that. So, uh, okay. I'm gonna stop the recording and then I'm gonna talk about the assignment. So you have your oh, yeah. oh what, what was it? Oh yeah, this video has been, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. This video has been sponsored by Coronavirus 2020. <laughs>